The following program may contain subject matter and language suitable for mature audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to The Meltdown. My name is Norm. And my name is Jeff. And today we're going to be taking our iPhones and our other kinds of phones and we're going to be just doing this. Uh, we're going to order a burger and then we're going to take pictures of it. Where's your phone, Jeff? Oh, sorry. Okay, so we're just going to sit there and do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the burger's going to get cold. <laughs> and then we're going to put our phones down, pick it up, have a nice big bite and go, Red food is cold! <laughs> Well, you know what, if you've actually experienced that, it's because you're a foodie. And uh, even though there's some interesting things about foodies, which we will discover in our fun facts, some mm -hmm. funny things about foodies, which Lou Saracino will tell us about, there's also a ways that you can be deemed a foodie douchebag. We'll talk about that in our stupid stupidness. But Jeff, why don't you take us to our very first segment. Okay, no. On the menu. On the menu. <laughs> See what I did there? I did, yeah. yeah that's very good. It's as if I have a menu in front of me and I'm going to about to read what's coming up next. Right. Uh, here I am reading the menu. Read, read, read. Yeah. Uh, it's time for a meltdown fun fact. No, it's time for lots of fun facts. And here I am reading the menu, Norm. <laughs> what menu did you get? Did you get the kids' menu? <laughs> yes. Okay, yes, I get that. Norm, it's like I'm reading the menu and I'm reading about what's going to happen next. Yeah. So here I am reading the menu. Read, read, read. It's time for meltdown fun facts. <laughs> Okay, so here we've got eight fun facts about foodies, okay? okay. And uh, see, I'm, I'm sure these will make sense. Mm -hmm. Foodies are likely to sample everything. Mm -hmm. This means that whatever's on the menu, whether that is something already a favorite to the foodie or something completely new and unexpected, a foodie is most likely to sample the food first. This can be a very good thing when out at events or parties because the foodie could be the one sampling the foods that others have turned their nose to and chances are they may actually go for seconds. It can be a bad thing too if the foodie becomes greedy with their choices and devours everything before everyone else gets their fair share. Since foodies think a lot about food, it may be hard for them to share or to watch someone eat when they set their eyes on. Uh, remember, we eat first with our eyes because we are likely to eat something we find appealing. If you are blind, your other senses may compensate for you. That's a little side fact and somewhat unnecessary. Uh, here we go, number two. Foodies take their time to create food. What is the point of being in the kitchen creating food if not to enjoy the experience that is art in the making? That's right, for foodies they love creating all kinds of recipes and they enjoy the whole process starting with finding the right ingredients to waiting for the final product to arrive. Foodies may make many recipes at the same time but they can be known for their ability to pay close attention to details, which may give them the advantage of being able to multitask. Patience is a skill that foodies may or may not have, but if they appreciate what they're doing enough, they may be grateful that they waited. Patience. Yep. <laughs> Here's another one. Events with food are likely to have a gathering of foodies. You know, every time I say the word foodies, I, again, I want to just go throw up. <laughs> This goes well with foodies wanting to try just about anything edible. Events centered around food are likely to draw in the crowds, but to foodies, they may not be just on the lookout for food, but for the fellow foodies to share their love of food with. Imagine the feast that even two foodies could host. By being a foodie, the ease of making friends could make them the envy of others. This isn't to say that foodies like to make food just for themselves or those with similar interests. A foodie could still enjoy practicing in the kitchen by volunteering to help others. There you go. Here's another one. The grocery bill may be more expensive for a foodie. I think that goes without saying, yeah. but anyway, let's find out why that is. Foodies like to be in the kitchen and centering events around food, so chances are high that the grocery bill is too. 
This is only a bad thing if the foodie in question has multiple large bills coming in, but to a simple foodie who likes to enjoy food, it may be harmless to indulge just a bit. This is also true because foodies are less likely to buy prepackaged food, junk food, and fast food. The foodie is by nature creative, and they like to enjoy a wide variety of food that is of the gourmet type. Healthy food is more expensive because it takes longer to make and needs more resources to make. If the foodie chose half prepackaged foods or junk foods and half healthy foods, then there may be a chance of slimming down the grocery bill. Again, it goes without saying, <laughs> so I don't know why no, it's still interesting. they needed that second paragraph. Uh, I think we got three left. Thank God. Number five, foodies may be more likely to use coupons for food so that they get the best deals for more food. You know, I almost think you could throw the whole foodie concept out and just say people. Because I think this applies to freaking everyone. But for some reason, we're doing a show on foodies today. The producers thought that would be a good topic. So let's just carry on as if we're enjoying this. Oh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, me too. I've got a point to make. Uh, oh, please, interrupt well, it's me. It's not a comp terribly compelling Well, just make a, make a point. Uh, as I'm thinking about what you're saying, uh, it seems that, in general, there's two types of foodies. There's those that like to eat everything, um, but, but maybe not a whole lot of, as you were mentioning, maybe not a whole lot of junk food. And then there's the ones that are um, very careful with what they eat. They're particular about their food. They don't eat a lot, but they're mm. still very much interested in nutrition and good food and non-processed food. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I like know what you mean. There's a type, I, you know, I'm sort of gathering, there's a foodie that will eat everything. Now, it may be, it may be healthy food, but they eat, eat, eat. Whereas there's the people that think about food, but not obsessively. Mm. But they still are very particular about what they eat. Right. You know, you can say the same thing for people and sex. <laughs> then, and you can say, you know, there's people that just really, really like sex. And there's people that like any kind of sex. And then there's people that are very particular about the kind of sex they like and with the people they like it. But back in those days, Jeff, what did we call them? We called them sex maniacs. <laughs> Foodies, get the term foodie. We never called them sexies. They were sex maniacs. Sex maniacs. Anyway, let's continue. With so many grocery stores to compare and contrast deals with, a foodie is most likely prepared for this by bringing with them all the coupons they are able to use. Couponing can be very beneficial for everyone to try out at some point, and the foodie may be just the person to ask for an opinion on how to get started. You know, first, first you take the, the coupon out <laughs> of your wallet, and then you present the coupon to the cashier. That is how you use a coupon. <laughs> That's how to get started with the coupon. I'm a foodie, so you can trust me. <laughs> All right, let's go on. Number six, foodies may love to be the chef in the kitchen. This is a common saying, but if you can't stand the heat, then get out of the kitchen. A foodie will most likely want to be a chef in the kitchen if there is more than one person involved. This may be due to the fact that foodies may like their food made a certain way, or that they just love the idea of being in charge of what they love so much, which is food. Number seven, a career as a foodie may be a chef, baker, taste tester, <laughs> caterer, etc. Anything involving food will do. A chef is just one option, and there could be potential for a foodie to develop their skills further in making a living by doing what they do best in the kitchen. Since everyone needs to eat, finding a job centered around food should be no problem. So there you go. And our last one. On the negative side, a foodie may be at high risk to develop an eating disorder. What can become a problem in the future for a foodie is the risk of getting too obsessed with food and developing an eating disorder. This can be anorexia, bulimia, binge eating, as well as chances of developing mental problems such as OCD, anxiety, panic attacks, even depression. Food may be a way to nourish the body, mind, and spirit, but there should never come a point in a foodie's life when food controls every aspect of life. Yeah, so that kind of goes back to what I was saying. You know, there's, there seems to be like the people that are obsessed with food, the, the compulsive eaters, mm -hmm. even if it's maybe a lot of healthy food and other people that are able to say, okay, look, like I'll, I'll say I'll say this. I mean, for me, I've, I've had two blueberries so far today and we're not shooting early in the morning. My God, would you just slow down? <laughs> what are you trying to do? Eat the whole basket in like a month? <laughs> I, know, I know, at that rate. <laughs> I hope they were big fucking blueberries, dude. Anyway, uh, well, I, I generally don't eat till until after twelve noon. Well, that makes that makes uh, sense. Just, Although you know, you really honestly, they do say breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Now, if we go back into history, 
right? When, when everybody farmed for a living. Yeah. Of course, you had to have this massive big breakfast because you needed that energy to carry you through the day. And these yeah. people did a lot of physical work all day long. Yeah. Maybe a little break at lunch and then their dinner at night. But breakfast was always, you know, they would just eat so much because that was fuel. Mm -hmm. Problem is in today's society when most of us have jobs that are, you know, very... Uh, I was going to say sedimentary, but that's only if you're a geologist. Uh, sedentary, <laughs> where you're sitting a lot and yeah. not doing much, having that big breakfast is actually going to fuck you up. Mm. So, you know, I'm just, just look at history. Okay, <laughs> anyway, that's a whole other topic. Um, so that was uh, the, the facts on foodies, or some facts on foodies, I should say. It's not all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and Jeff, uh, now that you're taking a drink, why don't you take us to our next segment? Yes, it's time for a Meltdown Minute with Lou. Hi folks, this week we're talking about foodies, uh, people who uh, love food, but uh, more importantly, people who take pictures of the food before they're loving it, which I don't really get, because me being me, I like to eat. And I don't understand the delay, the lag there between, here's some great food, let me take a photo so that my friends know what I'm eating, hey, here's an idea, fuck off. Just eat the fucking food. What's the problem here, people? When I was a kid, and I think part of the issue is this. We are not, uh, we don't have a relationship with our food anymore. And I don't mean a relationship. Let's not get weird. It's not that kind of show. And you know what? If it is, we don't judge. You know what? I'm going to judge a little bit with this one. I'll be honest. But we don't have any connection to the food we eat. When I was a kid at my house, again, being Italian, we would make sausages. We would make wine. We'd make cheese. All of that stuff. And let me tell you something. There's no better summer spent than an eight-year-old kid shoving uh, meat into a casing. And by casing, I mean pig intestine, right? So my point is this, uh, just eat. Just eat, man. That's all I'm saying. And then take a photo. Make the eating the first part, <laughs> and then the photo an afterthought. You're welcome. Thank you, Lou. And now it's time for Meltdown Stupid Stupidness. Here we go from the just eat the damn thing department. <laughs> Ten signs that you're a foodie douchebag. This is by a fellow. I'm, I'm going to mention his name because it's a great article. His name is Sean Evans. And Sean Evans wrote this article, and we're just going to quote a little bit from it. Ready? All right. Two things. First, social media is a means of proving that your life doesn't suck while simultaneously documenting every painfully boring life event. There's nothing special about going to a restaurant. We all do it. If you think your order of escargot at Bourgogne is a life event worth documenting, consider your existence on a pretty pathetic trajectory. Second, while Instagram makes your acne less noticeable, it makes your food look a hundred times more disgusting. We don't know what it is about throwing a Walden filter over quinoa ravioli that makes it look like a plate of anal fissures, <laughs> but you're gross for eating it and a douchebag for sharing. Here's a section of his article called, You Want to Know Everything About Your Meat. That's what she said. <laughs> Listen, the less you know about how your food is prepared, the better. Trust us. Stop asking your server dumb questions. They, they couldn't care less about your altruism. They make like $4 an hour. You're not charming anyone. You might feel better knowing that your entree was a humanly raised, certified, organic, grass-fed, free roamer. But ultimately, the cow was tased in the face and bled to death upside down so that you could try the dry-aged burger on an ore washer's bun at, say, the Dutch. Stop acting so concerned, and if you're going to put your server through the trauma of explaining everything, tip generously. A 25% tip is the only thing that can save you. <laughs> Next section, you share the love of being a foodie. The lamest thing a couple can do is work out together. There's nothing wrong with going to the same gym at the same time, but side-by-side side, planking on neighboring BOSU balls next to waving back to someone who's not actually waving at you is the most humiliating thing you could do. I'm glad that's out of the way. The next lamest thing you can do is share a mutual love for loving every dining trend. The two of you sitting on the same side of the table bench while flirting your way through a phony argument over who served better foie gras La Silhouette or Casamono. Ah, you guys are so adorable. We totally hope you don't choke on your sweet potato gnocchi. I like this guy's style. <laughs> Next section, you're about that fine dining life. 
Aren't we in a recession? Who are these 20-somethings getting 11 in Madison cash? Either they're stupid enough to blow their rent money on a pre-fixed dinner, or they actually have the capital to blow $200 on something as innocuous as agadashi tofu, in which case, fuck you. We don't care how good you say the crunchy albacore ceviche at Red O's is, it'll never be as viscerally satisfying as the sour cream soaked final bite of a chipotle burrito. Shelling out hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars on a meal will forever be vexing because ultimately nothing can taste better than a Reese's peanut butter cup. And those things are like a dollar. <laughs> uh, here's an another section, you're fresh on the scene. In most major metropolitan areas, trendy restaurants are a measure of a person's social status. If we've learned anything about the high rate of restaurant turnover, it's that nobody gives a fuck about these places after, say, three months. So foodies like to get there for the opening. Look, restaurants are notorious for not having their shit together. In fact, if you care about the food, opening nights is the worst time to go. The kitchen will be overrun, which means you have to feign three hours of conversation with that bloated, balding schlub you dragged along to pay for the meal. Is that worth a Facebook check-in? We thought so. <laughs> uh, coming up to one of the last sections, you're starstruck. Oh, you know the chef. Amazing. When did that become a thing? Chefs are like guys who wrestle alligators. For a year, they were relegated to the social fringe until they could score a hit TV show on deep cable. Now chefs are tatted up faux celebrities with deals and delusions of name every restaurant after myself grandeur. Seriously. Every time Bobby Flay opens his mouth, he sets a new standard for irritating. Jamie Oliver is from the fattest country in Europe and has the nerve to start a food revolution in Los Angeles. Graham Elliott has restaurants... Graham Elliott, G-E-B, his initials, how clever. <laughs> Graham Witch, you know, like sandwich. Mm -hmm. And rumors are swirling of a Graham Burger, just what we need. You scoff at the basics. People who are snobbish about music or fashion are insufferable, but at least there's some sort of self-expression involved in their cultural pursuits. With food, you're just stuffing your fat face. Remember the next time you scoff at the wraparound line at Starbucks. There's no need to be pretentious. Lighten up, it's just food, and eventually, it's shit. Keep that in mind. I always used to, you know, if ever somebody made something and they said, oh, you know, I, I should have done this with it, I should have done that with it, or whatever, I always say, it, it doesn't matter, it's going to end up in the Ottawa River the same way. <laughs> it's true. I'm sorry, but it's true. <laughs> it's a family affair. If you pressure your son into kicking field goals or push your daughter into beauty pageants, He'll resent you and she'll develop an eating disorder. But they'll both get college scholarships. You can hang your hat on something. If you encourage your kids to blog about their Lunchables and store Capri Sun decanters, they'll only contribute to our country's already debilitating child obesity rate. Don't become a statistic. And that's, that's important. Uh, here's another sign. You anger bartenders on the regular. As the foodie scene clutters, a faction of Don Draper aspirants are going table to bar with berated restaurant employees. Requesting crafted cocktails and rare aperitifs they read about on the internet, these clowns take pride in making people, in this case bartenders, feel inferior. And you know what, that's, that's a, a no-no for me. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I do not like watching people talk rudely to, to serving staff. Mm -hmm. In fact, it, it's funny, somebody asked me once, um, how do you know if, if you should date a person, mm -hmm. right? And I said, first thing you should do is go to a restaurant, mm -hmm. watch how they treat people. Right. And to me, that is number one. I want, I'm, the side, I met this, 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 this woman in Toronto once, yeah. okay? And uh, it, it wasn't clear if we were gonna, you know, mm -hmm. start dating or whatever, uh, yeah. although it would have been long distance. Uh, but we we went for breakfast in the morning, mm -hmm. and I I couldn't believe how she was talking to the server, and right. it was funny. But right there, I'm, I'm like, no, I don't want to be with someone like yeah. that. So I'm just saying, that's a great dating tip, by the way, a free <laughs> dating tip from the meltdown. Yes, take take them to a restaurant and watch <laughs> how they treat people, because I'm telling you, that is how they're going to treat you in the future. Mm. All right, here's another sign. You hate foodies. A foodie hating foodies. Imagine that. Yeah. Nobody hates foodies more than food critics. 
They've seen what the iPhone did to the weatherman, and they fear the same time to get a real job fate. Any hot girl with an Instagram account, an affinity for brunch, and propensity towards evocative selfies can do a food critic's job at typically 50 times the following. If you're mad, develop a more worthwhile skill than deciding what tastes good. Anyone can do that. I agree. And that actually was our last uh, sign that you're a foodie douchebag. The last one. The, the very last one. <laughs> All right, so next week, Jeff. Next week. Uh, we're going to be back. Okay. And we're going to be talking about drunks. 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 Drinking people, people drinking, what do they do? We're going to look at some facts about drinking, and then we're going to look at some stupid things that people have done when they're drunk. You don't want to miss that. Yeah. So until then, my name's Norm. And my name's Jeff. And this has been The Meltdown. Ciao.